What's up guys? Devil Dog Gamer here and today we are taking our first flight in Heat Blur's F14B for DCS. This has been a long time coming and I finally have my hands on it and I gotta say, oh my god, worth the wait. So for all of you who are not um, big into DCS or fans of DCS, this is the F14B. That there, that guy back there, is Jester. You can either play uh, with a player in your rear seat as a Rio, or you can play with the AI Jester, who do does a lot of the uh, the hands-on work. I do have to say, for the people who um, just look at DCS and say, oh my god, it's so hard to learn aircraft, the F-14B is the biggest handful in flying I've had since the uh, MiG-21, but it is the easiest to learn. Startups a breeze. Jester actually has an assisted startup where he will run you through the checklist, tell you where to click, and go from there. My wing sweep is jacked up. Awesome. Um, not only that, a lot of the weapon systems and the radar and things and you know, navigation is all handled by Jester back there. So if you're a player that wants to play the Rio seat, you'll have a little more work to do. If you want to play up in the front seat, you got a little more flying to do. Very unforgiving aircraft. Um, the wings can snap. You can flat spinner. It takes a lot of rudder input uh, when you're doing high G turns. But overall, it's a lot of fun. This plane is probably the most dynamic and feels like you're flying plane in DCS. I think it's absolutely worth the wait. And the multi-crew is just a supplement for it. Now, we're going to go ahead and take off, and we're going to talk a little bit about Jester and some of the fun things he can do. Be nice if I, uh, oh, be nice if I turned off my parking brakes. There we go. All right, so we are going to take off. One of the cool things about the F-14 is you actually need to salute to use the cat now. <laughs> so you actually have to do a nice little salute. Which is a lot of fun. Okay, and we'll break. Let's check ourselves. If we're close enough. We'll speed up just a little bit more. Get right to the cat. And go from there. Flaps down. Okay. Perfect. Now to launch the launch bar, we are going to do uh, no strut, and we're going to kneel. And you'll see the aircraft actually kneels down, and the strut bar comes out. And we'll attach ourselves to it. You can see Jester back there holding on for dear life because he knows Devil Dog is flying the aircraft. Let's see. Yep, you can see his hand. Seat's armed. So we're going to throttle up to full power, full afterburner. There's a master caution, which I'm not too worried about. And we will salute. And off we go. Boom. Airborne. So we're gonna go, whoa, hello there. We're gonna go gear up. And flaps up, and throttle back a bit because I don't want anything crazy to happen with her. Let's go ahead and trim her out. Awesome, cool. All right, so one of the cool things about this is you have Jester. He's your AI Rio in the back. Now, when he was first announced, I thought a lot about possibly, since he handles your radar, might being a little OP when it comes to, let me throw my autopilot on, you know, spotting people in PvP. I do have to say, though, he does miss a lot of things. He's not the greatest in the world. But you might think, how do I access him? How do I tell him to do stuff? That's got to be a lot of extra keyboard stuff. One of the cool things about this is if you have a HOTUS Warthog, um, you know, Thrustmaster, Otis Warthog, Throttle, and Stick. It's pretty much plug and play. The only thing I had to change was my input for Thrust. That was it. Everything else is bound to where exactly where it should be and plug and play. The cool thing is, Jester has this little radio radial menu. You can bring it up where you can talk to him. And if you use head tracking, you can actually select what you want him to do with the head tracking. You can have him, you know set up let's just crew con contact Ugh, contract see so it's easy you can set his talking you can have him set to no talking disable landing call outs etc you can also have him spot which he'll look around 
you'll see start seeing him look around for aircraft and things like that. You can also use voice attack. So he has a lot of customization when it comes to what he can do. Let's have him set his scan. Yes, sir. And do all that fun stuff. The plane itself is a lot of fun to fly. You can see here the wings are flexing. And as you can see, as I did that nice little hard G turn, she wanted to kind of just nose down there. So you have to do some rudder inputs when you're doing some things. And, con and you know, adjust for the, uh, the nice little roll that she puts herself into. That makes these like, high G maneuvers a lot of fun. Wing, wing out flying is definitely difficult. But when you lock them back and you put the pedal to the metal, that's where things get a little more interesting with her flight characteristics. She becomes like this swan that's just diving from the clouds and wants to murder everything in front of it. But this thing is freaking fast. Absolutely insane. And when she gets wings back, she can turn and burn like the best of them. Granted, if you can keep up with what she wants to do, you'll black out a lot. I love the rattling. I love the... I mean, every maneuver you have has a counter maneuver. It's just insane. This thing is so much fun to fly, and to be, actually be able to ace her is going to be very, very difficult. I didn't even do that. I didn't even do that roll. I was pulling straight back on the stick, and she just wanted to go that direction, apparently. Okay, let's level her out. Comes with a wide assortment of weapons, from laser-guided bombs to dumb bombs to the AIM-54 Phoenix to AIM-7s, AIM-9s, rocket pods, all kinds of things. Even those little transport pods that you can load your bags into and things like that. This thing is a lot of fun, and dogfighting in it is definitely difficult, but the multi-crew ability of this aircraft and having, you know, your buddy back there doing your own thing is definitely a lot of fun. The one complaint that I will see, let me uh, try to reset my uh, wing sweep, that might, yeah, there we go, we reset it. Um, the one thing that I, I think we're gonna get complaints about is it takes a good good bit of time compared to some of the other aircraft for its INS to align. Now, you do need the INS aligned um, for the weapons to be pretty much you know good to go. There is a, a line on point kind of mode that you can do only on the ground, which makes it faster. But from the ship, that's pretty much impossible to use. But um, those guys who do PvP that get shot down a lot and that want to jump right back into the action, the INS is definitely going to be kind of a killer for them. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get going, but I think that if you get a competent Rio player, it might go a little faster. But if you're one of those people that has a hard time remembering all the steps of the aircraft, Jester's definitely going to help you with the, uh, the call-outs and, you know, helping you know what you need to do. Let's see what he has to say about a few things. Uh, navigation utility. Let's set TACAN. Select mode. Yes, sir. There we go. We're going to be going in and trying to land on the ship here soon. But first, we're going to do a nice little flyby on it because, you know, that's the Navy thing to do. Um, this is my kind of introduction to this to this bird. We're going to be doing a lot of videos with it. Um, a lot of air-to-air, air-to-ground, multi-crew, things like that. But I know a lot of you of my fan base are not actual players at DCS. And, you know, this is one of those these aircraft that's so iconic. It's a good starter aircraft. It has multi-crew. The Jester AI helps you out so much that this would be a great aircraft to start with to be able to learn DCS and not only be competitive, but actually have a lot of fun uh, doing it because, you know, the danger zone intensifies. Woo! As you can see, she, uh, she likes to turn and burn with those wings back. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead. Um, I've only done one carrier landing with this thing. It was not pretty. Um, I caught the one wire, and Jester told me that the LSO looked like he bailed off the ship. 
So, this is going to be a fun little experience to see how well we can actually do this. We're going to get our hook down now before I forget about it. Is that hook? Yep, that's the hook. No. There we go. Now that okay. I had them in I had the hook in emergency mode. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start slowing down and getting a little lower here. To do this, we are going to set ourselves to landing mode. Awesome. And we'll get ourselves a little lower. I haven't really studied what the Case 1 recovery is for this aircraft compared to the uh, F-18, but I will have to tell you that I am a terrible um, at landing the F-18 on the carrier. It usually takes me two or three tries. This probably going to take me just as much. Uh, we're going to try to trim her out real quick here and see what we can do. Okay, trimming her, and we'll go gear out, and now we got to trim her again, because plain stuff, and we want to go full flaps, and bring out our speed brake, slow down. Okay, and then bring my speed brake back in. It's gonna be so bad boys I am so bad at this literally the worst I already feel like I'm way too low for this yeah, let's double check everything's out yep to turn her around. I'm pretty sure I'm going to crash this into the deck, but uh, hopefully Jester will help me out here a little bit. Altitude's about 800 feet. That's not where I wanted to be. I feel like that's way too high, so let's start bringing her down a bit. Start slowing her down too. Oh, we're off a bit. Oh, Jesus. This is going to be painful. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, Jesus, that was terrible. Yeah, we're way off. All right. I don't think I'm in the correct mode for this, to be honest. We're in landing. And we're kind of stalling. As you can see here, she's a still very squirrely. Do I have my speed break out? Nope. Might as well, though. Jeez. There is something I'm missing here. Okay, let's try this again. We're a little 
a little lower than we once were. About 600 feet. But we're stalling hard. Oh my god, there's no way I'm getting her on the boat. Yep. As you can tell, Devil Dog still needs more practice. Only second attempt. Not the worst thing. There, I feel like there's just something missing on here. You know what I should do? Let's trim her up to that E bracket and see what happens. Okay, that's not the worst. Okay, we can get this if we do the E bracket. It's our speed. Oh my god. It's amazing that something this big actually flew. You know what I mean? I just find it absolutely amazing. Yeah, maybe that E bracket wasn't what I should have been doing. Because we are high. And now we're stalling pretty hard. Alright, last attempt before we take her back into land. Because we can't just have the whole video of me just trying to figure out how to land this bird on the freaking deck. Because that would be just boring as shit, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're super high, man. We're going to have to come in real fast and low. We'll put her down either way. We did it. Is this plane even airworthy anymore? <laughs> you tell me. Forget you. That was the uh, one wire. Forget you, Jester. <laughs> See, as you can tell, he gives you a real hard time um, if you do this wrong, which I did. So that was fun. Oh wow. Let's get the launch bar up. And we'll get the wings back and nose wheel steering. Which doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Because I think we broke the plane. Yes, I do believe we have broken the plane. <laughs> uh, but anyways, boys, we're going to get to learn this aircraft a little more. I maybe have like two hours with it, and that was actually the second time I've ever put her on the deck, which uh, was difficult. But, of course, there will be more guides, more learning. With anything, it all takes time and practice. But if you guys want to see some more of the F-14B from Heat Blur, let me know in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.